Hi guys, Anne Marie here. This video is called Cleanup Embellishments, and it's because I was cleaning off my desk, found some odds and ends, scraps from cut apart pages, mostly. That one was that one's a little bag that something had arrived in, like a scrap of craft card stock, some banner strips that I thought might make good embellishments. So this video is about me prepping them as embellishments. So I'm just gonna go through and cut the bag open, set it aside as like a large scrap, and now I'm tackling the individual pieces. Individual pieces, sorry. All right, so some of them don't need much. They just need to be trimmed out. Um, I turned out to not be happy with the route this one took when I cut it out, and maybe I should have just left it alone. Um, I tried my corner rounder on it, but frankly, it was it's too big of corners. You're gonna see that here. If I had something that did smaller corners, not so rounded, then maybe it would have looked right, but it looked kind of funky. <laughs> so I'm trying to decide if I wanna do anything about it or if I'm just gonna let it go, and I decided to just let it go. There's a lot of cut aparts and scraps in this pile that are lined, so they automatically make great journaling spots or uh, sentiment type strips for cards. So you're gonna see me make a lot of those today. And if you're wondering like what I do with these after I make them, a lot of times they sit out for on my desk for longer. Like I have a little pile of these things and I just kind of dig through them and see if I can incorporate any into projects. But um, eventually I do go through and store them and so I'll kind of talk a little bit about how I store them as we go. Um, this one is a scrap of paper that I had cut out a bunch of individual clouds. I'd fussy cut them. Um, I hadn't really cut any with the little fake washi or anything. This was kind of one of those pieces where it either wasn't a complete cloud that I could fussy cut or it had the washi incorporated and I just didn't know what to do with it. So. Um, here I decided, you know what, instead of letting this perfectly good, you know, I don't know, four by four scrap go to waste, might as well rescue something from it. Um, and so I just trimmed it down to the actual image of the layered clouds and the washi, and it'll be pretty on, you know, just like it is on the side of a page uh, to build like, or tucked underneath something to build an embellishment cluster on top of. So I just fussy cut it out and I'm setting that to the side. Uh, this little cut apart, it's an odd size. It's not a size that I would use frequently. And I don't do a lot of like retro type stuff. I mean, really this, this pad, it was a die cuts with a view pad. Um, was one of the very few things that I own that has this kind of feel. So I didn't, really care for that telephone. But I liked the little balloon and it saying, hello friend. And I thought that might be fun on a card um, or on, on a scrapbook page like above a picture. So I went ahead and salvaged just the balloon and got rid of the rest. That Polaroid just need the edges cleaned up. And then here it's kind of the same thing. Like I just don't care for the <laughs> color combination. And that phone, I just, eh, I don't know why. To each his own, but I didn't care for it. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is cut out a little piece from the center to use as a journaling spot. And I decided the rectangle was not going to be very useful. I just wasn't going to get enough, but maybe a square would be better and I liked that more and then you, this is the first of many times that I flipped the die over incorrectly look at me tape that down that's not going to cut <laughs> so I did that a few times I sent it through the machine a few times that way I think I cut most of them out um, but just know I did fix them <laughs> all eventually so it's all right I'm a doofus it's okay it's, it's just, I've always been that way, so, you know. 
do a little cleaning up here, a little sorting through. Got some banners now. Now what I in originally intended to do with these was to cut these triangles apart and then stitch them on my sewing machine or hand stitch to create a banner, a ready to go embellishment piece. But I decided not to because there is a really wide array of colors here. Um, and I like color a lot, but I'm also very particular sometimes about how it goes um, with the whole the whole layout. So I decided I'm going to leave them as pieces. So if I only want to use three of them, I do that type of thing. And I stuck with that for these pieces as well. I mean, if nothing else, they can go you know mix and match on cards this way too. This is all still from the same die cuts with a view pack. And I wish I could remember the name. It was something like Sunday afternoons or something. And it's, it kind of reminds me of like the function of the family night game pack that's been out a lot lately. Um, it's been like, it's like, it was a lot of board games and bowling and leisure afternoon stuff that you would do on the weekend. Then this next piece, this more vintage-y looking piece, I have no idea. I want to say my mind's eye, but that doesn't totally feel right either. Um, but again, it was a big cut apart. I'd use the parts that I wanted to, and I was left over with all of these other cards. and wasn't sure what I was going to do. So I'm just getting out, you know, going through my different dies, running some pink, pinked circles with that camera lens there. And then the back side is this good, like this great gray chevron that really goes well with the chevron in the cloud pieces, even though this is completely different company, different line, everything, they coordinate well, they don't clash. So I'm punching a bunch of clouds out of the scraps that could also be used with that. And of course I've got some that are sideways and some that are up and down and that kind of thing bugs me for some reason. So. I will probably not use them on the same piece, but still. Um, so, you know, I mentioned I would talk about how I store these. I have a whole little thing of just clouds. So I would put all of those little cloud related things into a four by six iris photo keeper case that's just for clouds. The same thing with um, all of these different journaling spots I'm creating, if they're big enough to go in my Project Life style card tray, they'll go there. But if they're smaller than that, that I feel like they'd get lost or damaged in there, then they go in a 4x6 Iris Photo Keeper case that I have labeled as small spots. <laughs> and those are small journaling spots or small little circular elements, basically, that I can build embellishment clusters off of. And I would do that, again, after I leave these out for a little while, live with them for a little while and decide um, that I am not going to use them, you know, right away. But I leave them out for just a bit. Because sometimes, you know, I make these embellishments and they spark something right then. Like, ooh, these would go great with this paper pad or this would make a cute whatever card. And so sometimes they spark something and it's handy to have them out for that. Um, this is a cut apart card that, you know, there's some people in the world that do their little stitching dies <laughs> on every cut apart card that they use. And they are amazing people and I admire them so much. It's not me, but right now they're already out. It's literally what I'm doing. So I'm going to do it now. Um, I'm just, I'm simply too impatient to do that in the middle of a layout. But, you know, when it's all set up and it's, it's the process I'm doing right then, then that makes sense to me and that's easy for me to do. You know, when I'm in the mood to do this kind of thing, then that's a great, a great thing to do. But when I'm in the middle of creating a layout, I'm usually in flow with that layout and I am not going to want to stop drag out my dies, drag out my die cut machine just for one cut apart card. Again, more power to all the people that are like that because they're amazing. So I've got some more journaling spots. I'm just going to, and some more scraps. I'm just going to get what I can out of 
these. Little odds and ends I'm going to turn into banners after I trim them. But you know, the real thing is a lot of these are kind of vintagey looking like those, any of those from this, my mind's eye piece. I don't even know if it's my mind's eye. I just feel like it is whatever that piece is that looks very, um, yeah, garment district, isn't that my mind's eye? Anyway, whatever the pieces are that I'm pulling from that, um, it's very vintagey, and that is not my usual thing. That's not usually what I go for. So um, I also have a four by six iris photo keeper, iris case photo keeper, that is um, just for vintage items. So that's what where these would go most likely because that's the I, I just don't do it that often so the first place i would look for vintage type embellishments would be in my vintage embellishment keeper So see there, you see the indentation of the die. It's because I ran it through backwards and I got very frustrated at that point. That's why the little fist dance there. And just, I'm flaky as hell sometimes. It's annoying. It's all right. <laughs> Does anybody else do that? Am I the only one? <laughs> Look at me, I just, I'm doing it again. Ugh, it's so frustrating. I tried to cut out every time I um, was running through the die cut machine just because I'm on the same surface that my camera is clamped to. So it shakes it a little bit. I hope I got them all. It makes for a lot of transitions, but you know, it's better than shake, 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 shake. Okay, so here I'm trying to figure out how I can use this craft um, scrap that I had. It goes pretty well with all of the different vintage -y elements. So I'm kind of checking sizes here so I can make some borders for all these different pieces. I'm just trying to figure out what sizes I need so I can be efficient. Fortunately, that, that wasn't very efficient. <laughs> and I you know, did try to cut some out so I can still use those scraps later. So a lot of my dies that I have, I wouldn't even say all of them, they're generic enough that I feel like you could probably find them anywhere. So I don't have links to um, these specific products because, I mean, they're they're just, they exist, you know? Pierced circles, stitched frames, scalloped circles, pinked circles. There's so many companies now that make those dies. Go out and find the ones you like or go out and find cheap ones, which is what I did. I either got them on sale or on clearance or on AliExpress. So I don't often link to products because I really believe in just using what you have or using what you can find and being creative with that. This is a punch I've had for ages, I believe from Hobby Lobby. And it just happens to fit really well with my circle punch that I also like acquired randomly. I get a lot of stuff from like LSS garage sales or literal garage sales or um, friends selling stuff on message boards. I really feel like scrapbooking is one of those things you can do so cheap um, or you can acquire a lot for cheap. You can definitely also spend 
a ton of money. Like I get that. Um, but I also think you can do this really inexpensively. It, and, and it's a wonderful thing because it makes the hobby accessible, but <laughs> it's also, um, kind of problematic because you can acquire like a ton of stuff and, uh, run out of room pretty quick too. So here I'm just, there's some, you know, odd scraps. This was basically like a ledger style paper, um, with a lot of distressing and then a few touches of additional embellishments um, along the sides and bottom. And so I'm just chopping it up into more usable bits. So this is turning into a little piece of music ephemera and I'm going to cut those roses to make a little piece of, I don't know, just ephemera, just generic ephemera. making some scraps that um, have the lines and then using my notebook punch because those are fun for journaling or to tuck um, in embellishment clusters. And again, if I, if I don't use these, instead of putting these in my cut apart stuff, probably I'm going to put them in my vintage stuff because I feel like that's more where I would need them. Like if I went looking through my vintage embellishments, I would be happy to find journaling stuff there. If I have to flip through my project life cards, there's just so many there or journaling spots. Um, I would probably disregard them altogether because I'm not going there thinking vintage since I don't scrap that style very often. And then this is just a pretty quick layout where I show like, the results. So this is basically everything I got from two scrap pieces of paper. I could have thrown them away. Some people do. Could have recycled them. Um, but instead I took, you know, half an hour on a Saturday and just played a little bit and came up with some other stuff and made it more usable. And I like that. It's a good way to get, you know, good value for your money. It's a good way to use things up all the way, and I, I like that. Just showing that I can use either side on those clouds that have that pretty black damask print. Yeah, so that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have a ton of videos <laughs> in my editing queue. I'm just having some issues with my editing software. So hopefully I'll get those out to you soon. Um, but this was a pretty quick, fun one that I thought I could push out quickly. So I hope you enjoy and I will see y'all later. Bye.